appreciate the good singing tonight. Appreciate all those that helped us. Amen. To uh, to praise the Lord tonight with our voice. Amen. To lift Him up and honor Him tonight and to glorify His name. Amen. He's good to us. Amen. He's worthy tonight. Amen. I love Him. I don't know about you, but I love Him. Amen. Hallelujah tonight. Thinking about this service tonight, the Lord would, amen, bring to my heart some words this morning that uh, we'd like for just a few minutes of time tonight, amen, to share with you, amen. We've been dealing somewhat with the uh, with the uh, the uh, preaching about maturity, about growing spiritually, amen, and I thought about it this morning, you know, the sign, amen, of a, of a Christian, you know, the one of the, the best things, one of the benchmarks or one of the markers that I've always looked for in my personal life as a, as a Christian, one that loves Christ, has turned from the world and has sought to please the Lord with my life, is the trouble or the trial, the testing of the enemy. Amen. I, I, now, I know that sets wrong with a lot of denominations today and a lot of people, a lot of churches Amen. They they want to hear about the blessing. They want to hear about the goodness and the greatness and how everything's going to be good. But, amen, the benchmark or the sign, the, that which is necessary, amen, to show you where you stand with Christ is the opposition of the enemy. Amen. When we look through God's Word, we find, amen, many and countless blessings in this Word. But we don't find of any of those blessings, amen, that a person didn't go through trouble, amen, in order to receive from God, amen. And many of the people in this word, amen, our uh, examples, amen, and the people that walked before us, amen, that fought and, and, and bled and the people that pushed and worked and strived and suffered, amen, that we could have what we have today. They done it through adversity, amen. They all went through opposition, Amen. And the enemy has always withstood against the true church. Amen. The born-again believer. Amen. And I believe today that, amen, as James would remind us, amen, that we would count it all a joy when we would enter into divers' temptations. Amen. And if you have your Bibles tonight and you'll read with us in James chapter number 1. Amen. Uh, this is right after Hebrews and right before, I believe, Peter. Amen. But if you'll turn with us, amen, to James chapter number 1. We want to read, amen, for a little bit of time and let the Lord have his way tonight. Amen. Do you love him tonight? Amen. amen. Appreciate you for being here. Amen. Appreciate the good Lord tonight for his, his mercy and his grace to allow us to be here. We thank him for an opportunity to come again in this house. Amen. And he's just wonderful tonight. Amen. He's good. Amen. And he's worthy, certainly worthy tonight to be praised. Amen. And we just want to do our best tonight to, amen, lift him up. Amen. I'm glad tonight, amen, that he's my champion. Amen. I'm glad tonight that he is my hero. I'm glad tonight that he won at Calvary. Amen. And because, amen, he lives, I can live also. Amen. And I thought, uh, you know, Lord, many a time I failed you through the course of this life. Many a times I felt like I've missed the mark or I've not reached, amen, to the standard, amen, of righteousness and holiness, amen. Sometimes there's been many, amen, who has reminded me of my failures. There's been those, amen, who was more than happy to point out where I didn't do the right thing or I didn't, amen, uh, uh, preach, amen, very well or I didn't sing very well. Uh, the enemy has such as that out there, amen, to oppose, amen, those that are trying, amen. Uh, but the Lord showed me in the midst of, uh, of the opposition and in the midst of whenever I would get down and out about, amen, not being able to please everybody or not being able to, amen, preach a message that everybody would pat me on the back about and, and, and the times that I would hear the opposition or the word that would be a discouragement, uh, the Lord would show me time and time again to help me in the midst of me being down and out as we normally do whenever somebody comes against us. Amen. He would show me that. He said, son, this is a mark. Amen. This is a benchmark or this is a, 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 an opportunity or a way for you to know that I am with you. Amen. Is that the enemy fights you so hard. Amen. So I just want to give you courage tonight. Amen. If you're fighting, if you're striving, amen, for the right. Amen. If you're doing that which the Lord has laid in your heart. 
amen, up and down somewhat, amen. In other words, you're, you're, you're pushing, you're striving, amen. You're not always feeling like you're achieving anything. You don't always feel like you're, amen, the windshield. Sometimes you feel like the bug. Sometimes you feel like the enemy's getting the upper hand. Sometimes you feel like you're not uh, being that overcomer that you'd like to be. Uh, but, amen, I want to tell you something. Just continue to hold on, amen. Continue to push and strive, amen, press, amen, uh, amen, for, amen, the prize of the mark, the mark amen. Uh, but we understand something here. If we go, amen, to James, uh, uh, I want to read this, and I want us to minister for just a few minutes of time. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Now, when we read this, we have to understand something. Amen. You have to understand the intent of this letter. Amen. Who did he say it was to? To the twelve tribes scattered abroad. Amen. Now, we never want to take something out of context. We never want to take something that was written, amen, and then applied in a totally different situation. Amen. We was not there when James was speaking and writing. Amen. But if I was talking to you, Brother Robbie, and then a hundred years from now, somebody took what I said and tried to totally mean something else, we would all know, hey, Brother Chris was talking to Robbie. But that generation, that era, or that era of time would not maybe comprehend that if they don't keep the context from which what is being spoken. So we know here that James has, amen, the 12 tribes, amen, which are scattered abroad uh, uh, on his heart, amen. He's writing, amen, to his brethren, amen. This is the, the Israelite, those that, amen, were born Jews, amen, who have turned from Judaism and turned to Christ, uh, and they're being persecuted like never before, amen. They've entered into a time here uh, when the, uh, the Roman Empire is just about, amen, to amen, tear the temple down, amen. Uh, they're fixing to destroy everything. We know that happened in 70 A.D. Christ died, and then 70 years later, we know that they tore the temple down and ransacked, amen, the city of Jerusalem, amen. They completely destroyed it almost, uh, but this is a time, amen, uh, getting close to that time, uh, and the oppression is heavy on the Jews that are trying to live for Christ. You have to understand something, uh, amen, that the Jewish man or the Jewish woman, uh, uh, a family meant a lot to them, and they, uh, uh, the, everything revolved around the family unit, amen. God instituted the family, amen, when he said, let one man and one woman, amen, come together. Let a man leave his mother and father, let him join him himself to one woman, and the two shall become one flesh, amen, uh, uh, understanding that God wanted a family, so he planted a son, amen, uh, and reaped, amen, a family, amen, you and I that would come, amen, to the belief of his son, Jesus Christ, uh, and the gift that he gave and the, uh, the efficacious or the atoning work, amen, uh, that the blood provided for us, amen, when we hold to that by faith, amen, we're adopted into the family of God, and, and understanding the family unit here is very near and dear to God, and, and so in the, the church here, we have the Jewish believers trying to live for God uh, and their families, amen, some are, some aren't, uh, and the opposition against them uh, is such uh, uh, intense, amen, uh, the ridicule and the pressure, amen, for them to revert back to Judaism. You know that we have thousands and thousands of years, uh, uh, Brother Hezekiah or Brother Micah or whatever, or Sister uh, 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 Mary, you know we have thousands and thousands of years of, of history that back up, uh, amen, Moses and, and the prophets, amen. And here you are in, in this day and our turning away from what we have known in our history and what God gave us. Uh, and they would just be a relentless attack against, amen, any Jew that turned from Judaism and turned to Christ. So you have to understand whenever he's writing here, amen, he's writing to those, amen, who are under the heaviest attack, amen, that they've ever faced. Now, let me ask you something. Whenever you're trying to serve Christ, amen, I believe if I look around here, everybody in here knows Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So you're going to understand what I'm saying here. If you attack me in my body, I, I don't like that, amen. If sickness comes, I, I don't like to be sick. If, if I'm attacked in my workplace, in other words, somebody says something that offends me or, or, or my boss gets on to me or, or whatever the case may be or, or in, your, uh, uh, in your line of work, uh, that, that hurts, amen, and we don't like that. Uh, but when the enemy attacks our mind about us being saved or not saved, amen, when the enemy attacks us about our standing with Christ, 
Christ, amen. Uh, that hurts me more than anything else, amen. Uh, I can take some medicine and get over my sickness, amen. Uh, I can work harder, amen, and please my boss, man. Uh, I can make a right wrong, uh, but when I fight that battle, amen, in my mind, and that enemy relentlessly attacks me, uh, amen, and tries to confuse me uh, and tell me that I don't have anything, uh, that there is no hope, amen, uh, that everything you're doing, every message you preach, every song you sing, uh, every time you go to that church, you're not accomplishing anything. Uh, you're just wasting your time. Uh, go back into the world. Have fun, son. Uh, you ain't got much longer to live. Might as well live it up, amen. Go back to doing the things that you used to do, uh, amen, and it's a relentless attack, amen, on each of us. Doesn't that hurt you more than anything else? Amen. In other words, when the enemy comes against us in our faith, amen, he comes against us in our relationship with Christ. I understand something here. James is trying to give this, uh, uh, in this letter, he's trying to give comfort, and he's trying to bring, amen, a, a, a sense, amen, a, a, of stability, amen, to these believers. Listen to what he says. My brethren... Count it all a joy when you fall into divers temptations. Now, this word divers means many. Amen. Count it all a joy. In other words, be joyful when you enter into many temptations. That doesn't sound like a sentence that we want to start off with. Amen. Whenever we're going through trouble. Amen. I, I, the advice that I want from my pastor or the advice that I want from my friend, or the advice that I want from somebody who's trying to help me, is that hey, you're going to oh, get over this. It's going to get better. The, it, it's always darkest before the dawn, but I promise you the silver lining's coming, and, and tomorrow it's going to be great, and tomorrow's going to be beautiful, and, and, and you just get through the night, weep and endure till the night, amen, but joy comes in the morning, amen. Uh, but what happens when that night season is not, amen, uh, a 12-hour period? What happens whenever that night season, uh, amen, lasts for days and days on end, amen, uh, and there's no silver lining on the cloud in the morning, amen, uh, when we get up in the morning, amen, we still feel the mully grub. We still feel the pressure, the pain. We still feel the opposition against us, amen. And we begin to press, amen. Uh, and he comes against us, amen, in our faith, amen. Uh, and he's trying to destroy, amen, the very foundation from which we stand, amen. And he begins to peck at it. He begins to gnaw at it. And he begins to attack, amen, uh, the very position in which we stand, amen. And that is upon Jesus Christ, him crucified uh, and risen to third day, amen, sitting at the right hand of the Father, amen, and because he shed one precious drop, amen, it touched me, saved me, sanctified me, I've been filled with the Holy Ghost, I've set my feet, amen, upon a solid rock, my eyes are fixed on him, and my heart is well, and I'm looking forward to the day he comes again, amen, he's attacking that very foundation, James said, count it all a joy, amen, when you enter in. Amen. When you fall in to diverse temptations. Amen. And we understand something here. Knowing this. In other words, having an understanding of this. In other words, we understand that we are to count it a joy when we fall into diverse temptations. If we look at this from the standpoint of the Apostle James. Amen. He's walked with Christ. Amen. This is not a fly-by-night one that a Johnny come lately. This is one that walked with Christ. He was one of the first ones, amen, picked on the sandy seashores uh, of the Galilean Sea, amen, when he walked by and he saw a couple of men fishing, amen, uh, or mending their nets, uh, and he spoke to them, amen. And the Bible says that two James and John, the sons of Zebedee, uh, they left their father's nets, amen, uh, and followed after Christ, amen. This is the same James, amen, uh, that left his home, left his family, left all that he knew, amen, to follow this man named Jesus. Uh, and in the midst of three and a half years, uh, Jesus taught them something and brought them to a, a revelation or a knowledge, amen, that would surpass anything they'd ever been taught uh, or anything they'd ever known uh, or anything they've ever experienced. Uh, he saw things uh, that nobody else ever saw, amen. He heard things. Uh, he experienced things. Uh, he was a part, amen, uh, of the inner circle, amen. Uh, he was a part, amen, uh, when Jesus said, Peter, James, and John, come with me. Uh, and the Bible says that he told them, them to watch and wait, amen, and to pray. And it said he went a little further, amen. He left the nine back, amen. But them three got to come a little closer to him uh, than everybody else, amen. Uh, but yet when he came back, he found them asleep. 
But James was very much a part, a man of that which saw and heard and was a part of the ministry of Jesus Christ. So whenever he begins to expound, he was part of the upper room experience. We ain't got time tonight to go through that again. We went through that Sunday night, amen. Hallelujah. But tonight we're here with James, and he wants to encourage, amen, those that are coming up underneath the greatest oppression they've ever came. Now we know here he's talking specifically to, amen, his brethren and sisters who have left Judaism and have come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. But the same principle can be applied, amen, uh, because we have been grafted in, amen, to the family of God. He's not like Peter where he's talking to each and every one, amen. Uh, he's not talking to Jew and Gentile alike in the address of his, of his uh, letter here. Uh, he's addressing specifically, amen, uh, his Jewish brethren and sisters. Uh, but because we identify with them through the blood of Jesus Christ, amen, uh, we can't apply, amen, uh, the principle of what he taught to our life, amen. Uh, he might not have been talking to me specifically, uh, amen, because the Jewish blood does not run, amen, naturally through my veins. Uh, but because the blood of Calvary, amen, uh, from, amen, the Jew named Jesus Christ, amen, uh, who came amen, to seek and to save that which was lost, amen. His blood now runs through my veins, amen. In the sense, amen, I've been atoned, amen. I'm a part of the new birth, amen. Uh, and greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world, uh, amen. And I identify, amen, with Jesus Christ, amen. And I'm a part of the family of God, uh, and I want you to know, amen, you can count it a joy when you fall into diverse temptations. So we're talking about spiritual maturity, Amen. How am I growing? The mark. Amen. That I am a child of God. Amen. Part of the process, the life. Amen. The process is the life lived. Paul would use the word conversation. He said we all had our conversation in the past. That word conversation does not mean what we said, but it is a culmination, of, amen, of our actions, our thoughts, our words, amen, our deeds. Everything we've done is our part of our conversation. Amen. So we understand tonight when we fall in the diver's temptations, amen, he wants us to get a picture, amen. We have come out, amen, of the world, amen. We've been set apart by the blood of Christ. Yes. Amen. As they came out of Judaism, amen, their heart, amen, was to the law, amen, to serve the law to the jot and the tittle, amen. They performed it, amen, on a daily basis, amen. It was a ritual, amen. It was a, a ceremony constantly and daily that they had to perform, amen, in order to appease the law or to please the law. Uh, and even if they performed the law, amen, they were still found guilty, amen, uh, of the remembrance of sin, amen, uh, because we understand that the blood of bulls and goats uh, in Hebrews chapter number 10 told us uh, that it could never take away, amen, the remembrance of sin. Uh, it would atone the sin, amen, for a year. It would cover that sin, uh, but there would always be a remembrance of that sin. But what Jesus' blood did, not only did it wash, amen, not only did it cover, but it washed it clean, amen, never to be remembered again. Amen. So what I have to come to the conclusion of tonight, amen, is when the devil tries to bring up my past, amen, Jesus does not remember my past. Uh, God does not remember my past. He said, it is cast away as far as the east is from the west, amen, into the sea of forgetfulness, never no more to be remembered, amen. The enemy may remember my past, uh, and all that he anoints may remember my past, uh, but the one that counts, amen, does not remember my past. Uh, when I stand before him, amen, he's looking Looking for the blood, amen. And when he sees it applied to my heart and life, amen, I have confidence to hear him say, well done. Amen. Now, I understand something. While I'm in this life, while I'm in this, this side of the veil, amen, the veil is the crossing, the passing over. It's the time, amen, every man, woman, boy, and girl will face, amen, leaving this life for that which is to come. Amen. We'll all, amen, face the hand of death one way or another, amen. Either 
we'll go by the grave or we'll be caught up no more to be in this body. Amen. This body will change in a moment, a twinkling of an eye. So at some point, amen, this whole body's going, amen. Uh, and what I want us to get the understanding is, is that while we're here on this side, uh, we're going to face, amen, the trouble and the trial. But it is, amen, that which shows us, amen, that we have been born again and that Christ is Lord and Savior of our life, amen, because the enemy is a relentless attacker of those who love God, amen. He is a relentless pursuer, amen, of those, amen, who would try to serve Christ. Uh, he is like a roaring Line, amen. Seeking whom he may devour, amen. As Peter would tell us, amen. Don't be, amen, confused, uh, amen. Don't worry, amen, about what's going on, amen. But understand this above everything uh, that the devil is as a roaring lion, uh, and he's a coming after you, amen. So you're going to face things in this life, amen. You're going to face things. So what happens is, is as we understand this, James said, knowing this. Knowing this, how many of you know this tonight? I've been preaching it for five years as hard as anybody I've ever met. Amen. I, I promise you, there's coming a day when we're going to quit preaching about the trouble and trial and start preaching on some other things. I, I say that. We, we may not. But we have to know. Why? Because that's the message, amen, that prepares for the battle. Amen. When we train our troops, amen, we don't put them in front, amen, of the TV and give them, amen, KP duty and tell them to wash their clothes, amen, uh, and do this 12 hours a day. Amen. We don't set them in front and, and, and throw a birthday party or throw a party, amen. Uh, but we put them in the field. We go through simulation, amen. We put them through trouble and trial. We put them through test, amen, so that when the enemy comes, amen, or when they have to face the enemy, they're used to having their armor on, amen. They're used to running. They're used to crawling, amen. They're used to climbing, amen. They're used to pursuing, amen. They're used to being pursued, amen. They've understood the fight. Why? Because they've been put through the test that's us amen God's putting us through the test amen so amen that as we grow in him uh, amen every battle every struggle every trial uh, makes us stronger so that we can do what please him with our life how many of you understand we've not been put here amen just to sit in the church amen we, we've not been put here just to come to church a lot of people's got that idea. A lot of people have made their salvation going to church on Sunday morning. There are people that will never miss a Sunday morning service. There are people that have sat in church on Sunday mornings, and, and their testimony is, I ain't missed a service in 48 years. I've not missed a, I, my wife was sick, dying of cancer, but I left her bed. I came to church because I want to please God with my life. And, and you look at this, and you, you hear the words, you hear the words that are coming out of their mouth, but there's something that's missing in the testimony. Amen. What's missing in the testimony is a lot of the fruit, amen, that should abound to the account. In other words, what I'm trying to say is this. It's not, amen, what we say, amen, all the time. Is it, It's also how we do, amen, and how we work and how we love and how we care and how we carry out, amen, uh, what God called us to be, amen, and that was disciples, uh, and to go out into the world and to make disciples uh, and to love people and to care for people, amen, uh, not just come to the church house uh, so that we can say we were faithful to the church, amen, uh, but we have no fruit, we have nothing, amen, to add or nothing to put with, amen, our attendance, uh, amen, it was merely a show at the end of the day, amen, if you've been, amen, at work and you hadn't missed a day for a year, but your production doesn't show, what was you doing there every day? Now, I'm not saying we have to meet a production level, but I'm saying if God is in our heart, amen, then we will have fruit that will abound to our account. We will have something, amen, that'll show. Not only did I, amen, go, 
but I did something with what I had, amen. Uh, when he gave the five talents to one servant, and he gave two talents to another servant, and to the third servant he gave one talent. I'm not talking about the gift to play the piano. I'm not talking about the gift to sing uh, or the gift to preach. Uh, but the talent was a piece of money, amen. Uh, and each one of the first two, uh, the one with five said, I took what you give me, uh, and I went, amen, and I got five more to go with it, amen. The one with two said, I went, uh, and I invested or I worked with it, uh, and I've got two more plus what you gave, amen. And the one with one, guess what he did? He went and he buried it in the sand. And his idea was, I know that you're a hard man. He said, when the master came, he said, I know that you're a hard man and that you, you know, and he said, I just want to make sure I gave you back what you gave me. And he called him, amen, slothful. He called him lazy. He says, you haven't done anything with what I gave you. Now, we can't take that and turn it around. Now, I know we're talking about maturity, but listen to what the preacher said. We can't take that and twist it and say, I must perform in order to receive or to get love. Amen. The idea from the parable was that whenever you've been given something by God, amen, you will have a desire to do more with what he gave you with. Amen. You will want to have something, amen, to show him. Uh, amen. Like my children did. Uh, amen. When they would come home from school, they would want to show me their work. They didn't have to bring anything home for me to love them. They didn't have to do anything for me to love them. I was going to love them unconditionally anyway. But they had such a desire, amen, to please the Father, amen, that they wanted to show Dad what they had done. How many of you remember? Some of it was pitiful, wasn't it? I'm just telling the truth now. But you hung it on the refrigerator anyway, didn't you? You put it up there with everything else that you ever got. And you was just proud of it. It wasn't pretty, but it was your baby. And you hung it on the refrigerator. I'm saying this, God understands. Amen. But he desires, amen, for us to put effort, amen, behind, amen, what he's done for us. I want to do something for God. That's part of my spiritual growth. Amen, is that I don't want just want to take, amen. I don't want to be selfish. I don't want to just take from God. Uh, but I want to give something back, amen. Uh, and when I do it from a heart that's born again, amen, I have a genuine love for God, amen. And that love for God reciprocates uh, and helps me to have a genuine love for another man or another woman uh, in a way, amen, that I don't want them to die lost and go to hell. Uh, I want them to experience what I have experienced from the Father, amen. And I have a deep desire, amen. Amen, for them to understand that. And therefore I preach. Therefore I sing. Therefore I testify. Therefore I make myself accountable. Amen to Jesus Christ. Amen, whether I'm here or whether I'm shopping at Walmart or whether I'm at work, amen, or whether I'm riding down the road, amen. I'm not trying to mistreat the person riding beside me. I'm not trying to skip ahead of the woman, amen, with five buggy loads at Harvey's, amen. I know how some of you are. You got one thing you want to jump in front of her, amen. You nearly knock her down to get ahead of her, amen. But what I'm saying is, is the genuine love of God, amen, will show itself, amen, in the child of God uh, who simply holds himself or herself accountable, that God's watching. God's paying attention. God's watching me. Amen. I know I failed him. I know many of us, amen, there's, there's maybe a few of us in here perfect tonight, but there's some, amen, who have made mistakes and we failed God. But I'm so grateful tonight, amen, that as I love my children, amen, his love is far greater. His capacity to love and to understand and to care is far greater than that of us, amen. And if we could love our children, how much more? Does he care for us? Spiritual maturity. James said, knowing this, amen, it, it's in the knowing, amen, the knowing that there's going to be things that we don't understand. It's, it's in the, the battle plan. And what God wants to do is he wants to include you, amen, into the, the plan, amen, of what's taking place in your life. Amen. If, if I could, for in a closing second, amen, take back the veil for just a minute. Amen. How many of you would love to know what the future holds? Amen. We'd love to know what tomorrow holds. We'd love to be able, amen, to see tomorrow. And, and on a, but what God wants us to understand is this. I have tomorrow already taken care of. 
He wants you to understand. He says, tomorrow is already fine. Amen. He said, amen, tomorrow, take thought for today. Amen. For sufficient unto the day. Amen. Is the evil thereof. Tomorrow will take care of itself. In other words, I'm already in tomorrow working on tomorrow. Amen. He says, you take thought for today. Amen. That word sufficient unto the day. In other words, the idea that I must put up, pack up, amen, plan up for tomorrow, amen, because maybe God won't take care of me, he said, is the evil thereof. What are we doing for tomorrow that doesn't hold faith in God? Amen. I understand something. Tomorrow may never come, but God's going to be wherever. He'll be there. Working it out on my behalf. And if tomorrow comes, God's still going to be there taking care of it. So in spiritual maturity, amen, and, and the, the born-again Christian, the coming up of the babe, when Peter said, desire the sincere milk of the word, understanding that we need, amen, the nutrient that comes, amen, from the word of God. It is as milk to a infant, amen. It provides the building block, the essential, amen. First step, amen, is to get a hold of the Word of God and begin to desire it, amen, as a child would, that warm milk, amen. So as we begin to grow through the reading of God's Word, amen, and the building of our relationship, the praying and the seeking His face, the coming to church, the being part of a family of believers, hearing the Word of God preached, listening to the songs of Zion being sung, spending our time with other people who love God like we do, trying our best, amen, to take or stay away from the things of the world, uh, amen. We can't uh, completely put the world away in the sense we have to live in the world. We have to work in the world. Uh, we have to stand behind people at harvest who are cussing up a storm. Uh, we have to, amen, to, to, uh, to watch people run the red light in front of us that do all manner of evil against us. Uh, I, I mean, there's, there's opportunities at every hand for somebody, amen, to be used of the devil to come against you in this world we live in but understanding this James said knowing this knowing what that you're to count it a joy when you fall into divers temptations in other words he says my brethren all of you that are scattered abroad and all of you to the 12 tribes he says which are scattered abroad in other words you've been pushed to the limits You've been pushed out of your homes. You've been pushed out of your country. You've been made to take refuge in places that are ungodly. You've been made to take refuge in lands that are unfriendly. You've been made to leave the place of safety. You've been separated from your families. You've, all manner of evil has come against you. Uh, but he said, I want you to count it a joy, amen, when you fall into. You didn't go into it willingly, but you fell into it by the way, amen. You were walking rightly before God, amen, and trouble came, amen, and the temptation amen was there he said count it a joy knowing this that the trying of your faith works patience how many of you know we need patience tonight patience I thought about the building blocks of spiritual maturity the different places in the word of God where patience is not always the first thing sometimes it's the last thing I believe Peter in 1 Peter, about the first or second chapter, first chapter of 1 Peter, patience was about the fifth thing he mentioned. But I began to think about that, and James used it to start off with when he says, the trying of your faith. Without faith, it's impossible to what? Please God. You can't even begin, amen, to have a relationship without faith. Faith is always the first thing. You have to, amen, step out by faith, amen. The Spirit draws the heart, but it must be that measure of faith in the man or the woman, amen, that responds to that wooing of the Holy Ghost uh, and comes, amen. And when that faith is acted upon, amen, and the Spirit, amen, comes to the heart and draws you, amen, salvation, amen, comes. But he said the trying of your faith. In other words, he's going to try your faith. Didn't say he was going to try your patience. Didn't say he was going to try your diligence. Didn't say he was going to try, amen, your love. Didn't say he was going to try, amen, your virtue. But he said he was going to try your faith. But if we understand something, 
when our faith is tried, amen, it exercises it and it builds it and it increases it. Amen. So in order for us to come to God, we must believe. That's faith. We must have faith in God. We must, uh, uh, it's impossible to please Him and those that come to Him must believe, amen, that He is and that He's a reward of them that diligently seek after Him. So we understand faith, amen, must be operated upon. And when faith is operated upon and faith is exercised, we use our faith and He comes against that faith and we begin to hold, amen, with faith to God, it begins to strengthen it. And it does something beautiful, amen, in the heart of a believer. It begins to work patience. He says, knowing this, at the trial of your faith, it worketh patience. As we finish tonight, I can promise you, your relationship with Christ, now this, this kind of goes in the face of a lot of denominations today. But this is just the way I feel, the way I see it, the way God's revealed it to me, the way I feel about it. A man, when he's tempted or when he's tried, or a woman, if this person reverts back in the midst of this trial, if they allow this trial to overtake him or her, and the sense that they leave, amen, what God has done for them and turn back into the world. In other words, that's, that's what the enemy's trying to do. When he's trying your faith, he's trying to get you to discard your faith and revert back to what you knew before. Amen. Before Christ, you counted on your own talent, your own gifts, your own abilities. You counted on your street smarts. You counted on your circumstance. You counted on your experiences. Everything that got you to that point, that's what you counted on. After Christ, amen, you let go of that and you fell wholeheartedly, amen, upon, amen, the love, mercy, and grace of God and said, I'm going to trust you with my life, amen. And that's a hard thing to do, amen. It's a hard thing to give up that flesh, amen. But the born-again child of God, amen, gives him or herself up, amen, and puts himself completely at the will and the mercy of God to do whatsoever you will with me, Father. I'll be what you would have me to be, amen. And knowing this, amen, that when the enemy comes and he begins to try that uh, it works patience in the child of God Amen. but in the child or the person that is willing to go back to that which he or she knew before this is where I think amen you cannot get saved amen and then fail God on a constant daily basis with a willful sense that I can do what I want when I want and I'll depend on that one time prayer that's where I fall out with the idea that I got saved at 10 or 20 or 50 or whatever. And the life that I've lived does not prove or not show. There's no evidence. There's no fruit that abounds to my account. Whenever I was under the attack of the enemy, I would go back into the world. Every time the enemy, this person, every time the enemy comes and tries them, uh, they are just lay down their armor, amen, uh, and they'll fall back into their old way. A month, two months, ten months, whatever. The preacher comes, the, the deacons come and visit them and, and shakes him up a little bit, and then he, oh, God, I want to serve you again. Then he comes back. The danger in that is this. I understand and I know people who have fallen from grace. I was one of them. I knew the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in my life, but I turned from him in a moment when I didn't think I ever would. But I allowed what he done for me. I walked away from it and walked back into the world. And I know others who have done the same thing. And if the Lord would have come at that moment, I would have been lost and undone. I was as apart from him. He never stopped loving me. He never stopped wooing me. He never stopped asking and coming and pulling towards me. But I willfully put up a wall when I got to a low point and I got to a point where I allowed my faith, amen, to waver and I walked away from it and I went headlong back into the things I used to do. And I found comfort in the things that I used to do for a time. And then it all turned on me. And then I found myself in a hole, a bottomless, seemingly ever-falling black pit. And there was no peace, no comfort. There was nothing there. And I lashed out at anything and everything that had anything to do with the love of God. So I know what it's like to know the love of God. I know what it's like to reject the love of God. 
I don't want nobody to go through that. I don't want nobody to experience that. But I'm not so heady or so high-minded that I'm going to stand up here and be holier than thou and tell you that you can't or tell you that you ain't because I know I've been in the fight. I know what it's like. That's why I warn you, be careful. At every turn, be looking, watching, and waiting because when you think not, that line will attack. He'll attack. So I know when he says that the trying of your faith worketh patience, he's talking to the believers. He's talking to the believers. And at a moment when your faith is, your faith is tested, in order for patience to have her perfect work, you're going to have to hold on in the midst of hell itself. I'm not talking about getting in trouble for chewing gum in class, but I'm talking about trouble that comes to your home and it begins to separate in your family. It begins to tear up and divide, amen, things in your life, amen. It begins to tear up your job, amen. It Money begins to become a problem, amen. Fights begin to break out in the home, amen. All of a sudden, hell, amen, comes down, amen, uh, uh, to your life, amen. Uh, and at that moment, amen, uh, you're going to have to exercise your faith. And believe that even in the midst of what I don't understand, I've never experienced anything like this in my life, but I must trust that God has it under control. That's going to be the hardest thing you're ever going to do. But if you'll hold on, that exercise and that faith will work patience. And God will give you, in the midst of that trouble, He will give you something to hold on to. He didn't say it was going to pass in a 12-hour period. Weeping for the night may be longer than a 12-hour period of time. It may be some time. But I promise you, there will come a day, amen, when joy will come, amen. The morning will come, and the dawn will break, amen. The sun will come up again, amen. The blessing of God, the favor of God will rain down, and you'll understand that what I went through, amen, only strengthened me for more. But knowing this, <laughs> knowing this, knowing that it may be trouble ahead, arm yourself, guard yourself, prepare yourself. He gave us His Spirit, His Word. He gave us the church. He gave us fellowship. He gave us one another to help us in the midst of trouble. Whenever I fail, you know what I've missed? I still had the word, but I lost fellowship. I lost fellowship with him. I still had 10 Bibles at the house. I could have surrounded myself with Bibles. I could have had 10 people to read them to me at one time. In other words, I had the word, but I wouldn't read the word because I fell out of fellowship. I got cold and indifferent. I didn't have a church. I gave up a little church I was pastoring to take a job for more money. And I can promise you, I had whole, my, my pockets had holes in it because double the money, I had less than I had before. So I understand some things about allowing the devil to have his way. Amen. What looks like gold and what shines like gold and what shimmers like gold ain't always gold. But God's always faithful. He's true. And he's always on his word. And when you face your darkest, deepest, hardest moments, trust in God. Amen. I love you tonight and I appreciate you. He says, let patience have her perfect work. In other words, let patience do what she does. Amen. She endures. Amen. She suffers long love. We understand what Paul said. Amen. Suffered long, endured, envy if not, does not puff up, not vain, the different things he said. Amen. But in our young building block of spiritual maturity, amen, we have faith. And as our faith is tested, let our patience begin to grow. Amen. Because patience will do one thing. Patience will do one thing for you. It'll let you wait on God. It'll let you wait on God. And whenever people fail God, it's because they don't wait on God. They don't let God do what God's going to do. And we see time and time again people failing God 
turning around, going back into the world because they wouldn't have patience in the midst of their storm to wait on God. Amen. Let God do what God will do. Amen. Let Him work. Let Him, amen, complete His perfect work in you. Amen. I know some of you are going through some things, and there may be some things on the horizon. Amen. But trust in the Lord. He has it all under control. Amen. And I promise you tonight, if you love Him, and you're serving Him, amen, you're honoring Him with your heart and your life, and you've made Him Lord and Savior of your life, amen, He's going to take care of you. That you can trust Him. That you can depend upon. The church may drop and may fail. I may drop and fail. Brother and sister beside you may drop and fail, but God will never fail. Hold to Him. So I love you tonight. I appreciate you. I could keep on and keep on. Y'all keep sitting there. Amen. I just, I just don't know when to hush sometimes. I appreciate you. I love you. God bless you. Looking forward to this week. Amen. The Lord, amen, blessing you and, uh, and whatever. Amen. You may be facing God bringing a, a, an end to your battle. Amen. And giving you victory. Amen. I want to hear you testify. Amen. Of how God brought you through it. Amen. I, I long to hear. Amen. The fiery testimony. Amen. Of an overcomer. Amen. It just blesses my heart. It thrills my soul. Amen. And some of you's gone through some things and come through some things, and you're yet, amen, to stand up, testify, and to praise God for what He's done. And I'm going to tell you something. He's going to remind you of it one day. Amen. When you're going through hell and you're on your knees praying, asking God, where is He at? He's going to ask you, where was you at? Amen. He said, I, told, I, I dealt with your heart service after service to give me praise and honor. Amen. And you wouldn't do it. So I'm, I'm just being pastor now. I'm just telling you. Amen. God desires, amen, for his children to praise him and bless him. Amen. To thank him for what he's done for them. So we love you tonight.